These last few years have witnessed a great test of governing philosophies. The policies pursued by these states have sparked a mass exodus of productive Americans from these jurisdictions, with Florida serving as the most desired destination, a promised land of sanity. And here's the numbers to back that up. A new study from a major U.S. mover shows an exodus from big blue states like New York and California continues with people flocking to Republican-led states led by Florida and Texas. Why is it happening? With us now, Texas Public Policy Foundation Pres Vice President Chuck DeVore and Golden State Policy Council President Melissa Melendez. Thank you both for coming on. Chuck, to you first. I mean, I, people probably already know this, but, but Chuck and I are old high school football teammates. You were a California state lawmaker at some point in time, and you fled to Texas. In fact, one of those U-Hauls had your stuff in it a, a few years back, Chuck. And I guess the question to you is, was it a good move? You thought California was not worth saving. Was it a good move that you went to Texas? Well, certainly for my family, it was a good move. We were thankful that there was a Texas to go to, a refuge, a place to start over. Uh, Trace, we needed to do so because I was in the aerospace industry before I was elected in 2004. And in the six years I was in office before I was termed out, a lot of that industry left the state. Uh, and then, as life has it, uh, we had to take in uh, my wife's parents, who both were mm -hmm. suffering from dementia 12 years ago. And between that, you know, the, the, the additional challenge of needing more place to live, to have two more people under the roof and, and <laughs> trying to find something to do yeah. for a living. Uh, so moved to Texas and, and have been working here ever since. And it's been really good for right. us. You know, Melissa, I, I, the Sacramento Bee said the following here, quoting California's population shrinks for the third straight year as high costs stress households. It goes on, most of the population decline was explained by the 343-plus thousand people who moved to other U.S. states. The population decline also partly reflects failures in state policy. California is in a housing affordability crisis, and housing is one of your top concerns about this state. Yeah, Trace, I mean, so my husband and I, we have five kids and we look at each other and wonder how are they going to be able to afford a starter home, you know, like we did when we were coming up and we were first married. And it's impossible. In California, I think the average, the median home price is around $800,000. Who in the world yeah. can afford that? I mean, it's not. So, yes, people are leaving for places where they can actually afford a home that they can all fit in and not be falling on top of each other. Oh, and have money left over to pay their utilities and buy groceries and just, you know, do something fun now and then. Yeah, it really is. And I'm the same thing. I have daughters and you'll meet them in a minute. They're, you know, they're graduating college soon. And you think, where in the world are they going to live? Because it, it ain't going to be in California. Chuck, you wrote in Fox News op-ed said, quoting here, California's nation leading income taxes, crushing regulatory climate, rocketing energy costs due to climate change rules and over the top COVID-19 lockdowns have accelerated the state's population loss. But, but that has nothing to do with this next headline from foxnews.com, which said this. California rings in 2023 with new laws on abortion, transgender, youth, and illegal immigration police. So on top of the regulations and the policies, the left, according to a lot of people, have just gone crazy. Right. They're trying to create this uh, woke utopia in uh, California, and they're forgetting the basics, Trace. They're making it impossible for the average person to afford to live in California. And Trace, that's one of the reasons why I was really happy to have a modest role in helping to create the Golden State Policy Council. You know, California is such an important place. It's important to save California because of all the innovation that occurs out of the Golden State. Uh, and unfortunately, Trace, as you know, a lot of the good or bad ideas that originate in California go elsewhere. 45 years ago, Prop 13, the revolt against taxes, Ronald Reagan, and today, unfortunately, this insufferable woke agenda seems to be infecting the rest of the country from California. Yeah, and yet, Melissa, you stayed. You stayed. You're saying, you know what? I'm not leaving. I'm going to fight. And you think this can all be changed. The pendulum can swing. How? It, yeah, I do. Because, you know, Chuck recalls that... Texas had a similar problem when the Texas Public Policy Foundation was created. Texas wasn't in, you know, much of a different place than we are in California right now. Not quite as bad, but darn close. And Texas managed to turn it around. So do I think it's going to be easy? No. But 
California is worth saving. I mean, it is a beautiful state. There's so much to offer. And I don't want to leave. Most people don't want to leave. They're forced out. I mean, it's as though Governor Newsom is practically dragging them across state lines. But I don't want people to have to leave, especially, you know, those who have live their entire lives yeah. here, who have a business here, who have a family here. We want them to be able to stay, and we want people to start moving here from Texas instead of the other way around, because California, for three years in a row now, we've had the most one-way trips in a U-Haul truck out of our yep. state. Yep, it is. It is a beautiful state, but when you have to drive through a dozen homeless encampments to get to work, it gets frustrating. Melissa, yep. Chuck, Happy New Year. Thank you both for coming on.